Coming to you direct from Silencer Shop Studios, home of the glass case of emotion. Silencershop.com, the easiest way to buy silencers online, period. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Well, all right. I guess we're live now, or as live as we're going to be. And thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Student of the Gun Radio. I'm alive. You're alive. You're there. I'm there. And uh, that's what counts, right? But it's Tuesday. It's a Tuesday episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Thank you uh, once again for joining us. Man, we've got a story today that this is one of those ones that I almost skipped over because there's a lot of stories about... Uh, justifiable uses of force and justifiable homicides and and so forth. And I saw this one. Actually, it was shared uh, on our grad program. And I thought, hmm, I'll click on this and and see what the details are. And, wow, it's basically the perfect example of why to be and how to be an armed citizen. So we're going to dig into that pretty deep. Now, as you're listening to this, you're listening are you listening? Are you listening? We're coming back, or we actually, uh, we just arriving back from the NRA show, the NRA annual meeting and exhibits in Louisville. And so what we're going to do on Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to devote both of those days to an after action discussion of what went down and what we saw and who we talked to and uh, when we go on these trips, especially when there's so many different people involved. Remember last year, Jared, we had easily three days worth of material to talk about. You do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I remember. We had tons of material because we get to see everybody's in one place at one time. Yeah, that's right. So that, that I've got it blocked off in my show notes already, Wednesday and Thursday. NRA annual meeting after action. Or or do I? Let me look. Let me look. Yep, I do. I already did that. Maybe Friday we'll do something special. Are you impressed? For the grad program. You should be impressed. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, thank our those who make the uh, the show possible because we couldn't sit here in the glass case of emotion with all of our without all of our friends and and compatriots and you've already heard from one of them. You already heard about silencershop.com. But let's talk about Duracote. Why Duracoat? Well, because life is too short to have an ugly gun. That's why. Brown Owls, you got so, a gun. What? Can you Duracoat your silencer? You could Duracoat your silencer. Okay. Why Just not? Wondered. As long as the serial number is, can still be read, that is the main thing. But you can only Duracoat your silencer if you buy it from silencershop.com. That's right. Right? Yep. Okay. You, can, you can do that as long as the, the, the serial number is still visible and the, all the... All the writing, the manufacturer name and model and serial number, that needs to be because it's a serialized item. I had somebody ask that question because of paint and, like, fire and stuff and hot. And I was like, well, if you let it dry, then you'll Well, I mean, yeah, Duracoat, you put it on barrels of guns. Yeah. And gun, was, yeah, gun that, barrels get pretty hot. Right. Rifle barrels get pretty hot. Don't Duracoat the inside. No. Don't do that. No. Maybe that's what they're asking. <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's going to get hot, um, but uh, that's cool. No, I've I have Duracoat on my rifle barrels, on M4 barrels, and we've got them so hot that we couldn't touch them, and it didn't hurt the Duracoat. So that's a good question. All right, so uh, Duracoat, we got that check. Check that box. Brownells, if you have a gun, they got something for you. Even if you don't have a gun, they've got something for you too. So uh, that's it. That's it. So you guys are going to be – maybe we'll get Alex in the studio for the um, – like an after-action report because she's going to NRA with you us. Wanna, maybe we could get her her thoughts. Yeah. Her thoughts on her first big gun show. Yeah, because – Firearms industry trade show. She went to – I'm sure she had expectations about SHOT Show the first time we went. And mm. then we went – and then after that's that, that's right. I forgot she did go to that. So forget it. And yeah, and she hasn't killed me yet. So no, well, that doesn't count. Well, that's, an, that's like, yeah, it's different. It is. It isn't. It isn't. NRA is much more. You know enjoyable. what's going to happen? Uh, she's gonna. She's not going to know what to think because she went to shot with you, and that was 
the monster that it is. And then we went to the uh, Concealed Carry Expo, and she said, oh, I thought it was going to be bigger, like shot. I'm like, no, no. So now we're going to go to the NRA, and she's she's going to be like, ah! I, I don't know brain. which one. I don't know what to think. Maybe I'll get a recording of what she's her thoughts before and then her thoughts after. There you go. But right now, I'll just let her say what she needs to say. Attention, new listeners. We produced a free training video series called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. We want you to have access to this life-saving information. Get instant access now at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of those questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Well, all right. Thank you very much, Alex, for reminding everyone that we have a TV show as well and also that they can go on the Internet, use the interweb there, and go to studentofthegun.com and click on that training tab. Click on the button. You can do it. I'll, I'll let you. SWAT Fuel. What? SWAT Fuel. It does a body good. Sharper minds, stronger bodies, SWAT Fuel. You want to fuel yourself up? Go to SWATFuelStore.com and use the promo code SOTG2015. Save yourself some money and support an awesome company. There you go. Frog Lube. It's green. It's minty fresh. It just works. And it's extreme. Put it on your guns. Put it on your knives. Put it on whatever. I don't care. You're an American. Do what you want. And if you're overseas living in a slave state, you can still get Frog Lube. Uh Actually, Larry told us that he has shipped it overseas so that the steel drum people could coat their steel drums with it so they wouldn't rust. So there's that. So if you've got a steel drum, coat it with frog lube. And last but certainly not least, our friends at Crossbreed Holsters, the makers of the Super Tuck Deluxe, the Freedom Carry, the Purse Defender, the Bedside Backup, and the Ram Mount. Do I need to name more? Well, if that's not enough for you, go to Crossbreed Holsters. Dot com and arm yourself up. They will help you carry a gun. I guarantee it. Oh, dude, you know what? I didn't tag on this. I didn't. I didn't tag in the show notes that you need to play the Go Team music. But this is an absolute one hundred percent Go Team moment. And uh, our friends at Filter. Well, they don't know that they're our friends, but they are. Our friends from Filter have a perfect intro song for us. It's a good thing that I'm quick. Like, like this. You're quick on the button. That's why I say amen, my shot. A good shot, man. Woo! All right. Yeah, this is a story uh, as reported by guns.com. And uh, that was reported from ABC 13 uh, in Tejas. Now, this is kind of crazy. This is all kinds of crazy. Now, we've got accompanying audio that I'm going to have Jared play, but I'm going to set this up for you. Okay, the title of the story is Robber Fatally Shot After Targeting Father with Four-Year-Old in McDonald's drive through Yes, he was in the McDonald's drive through Not getting out of his car to walk into the McDonald's. Not walking from the McDonald's back to his car, but actually waiting in line to get a cheeseburger and fries. And somebody decided in League, Texas, and League, Texas is just outside of Houston, because Houston is a wonderful place to live. And I highly recommend that anyone move to Houston because it's just a beautiful city. Isn't that right, Jared? He says yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right. The uh, the initial setup is a father of, father of a young boy shot and killed a would-be robber who pulled a gun on him and his child in the drive through lane of a McDonald's in League, Texas, Saturday afternoon. And this was a week ago Saturday. Jared, you got the audio cute? Can you go ahead and play that? Let's go ahead and listen to the News Channel 13 live action behind the scenes uh, vi- audio. And then let's examine and break down this case because it is absolutely worth breaking down. A father shot and killed a robbery suspect after that robber pulled a gun on him at a fast food drive through today in League City. That shooting happened at the McDonald's drive through at 102 South State Highway 3. And I witness news reporter Lauren Lee was first at the scene this afternoon and tonight spoke exclusively with a lawyer in North Houston who's representing the man who opened fire. Lauren? 
Well, this man's attorney says he is surrounded by his family tonight, very upset, very shaken up by the shooting because he was trying to protect himself and his young son. Surveillance video from a League City cell phone store captured when a man fired three shots at a would-be robber in a McDonald's drive-thru this afternoon. He's thankful that he's alive, that his son's alive. Attorney Robert attorney. Pelton says his client was acting in self-defense. Never would have dreamed in a million years that a McDonald's uh, drive-thru, like blocks from the police station in broad daylight, two or three o'clock in the afternoon, something like this would happen. League City police say a robber pointed a gun at the man in his truck and a struggle ensued. His four-year-old son was in the back seat. He was trying to get his son, protect his son, and then he, I think he obviously saw a chance then to uh, to defend himself because he was afraid he was going to get shot. Pelton's client is licensed to carry a handgun, and he had it with him in his truck. I think he would want the other citizens to know that they have a right to protect themselves, and you have to be cautious all the time, wherever you are. This case will be referred to the district attorney's office, and the man who was shot three times later died at a Clear Lake hospital. He has not yet been identified. Reporting live in North Houston, Lauren Lee, 13 Eyewitness News. All right. Wow. That right there, I, I, I listened to the news thing, Jared, and uh, to that audio, and I knew after listening to the audio that I needed to put this story into Student of the Gun Radio, and we need to discuss it. A number one, what have we been saying, Jared, when you least expect it, what are you? Elected. Elected. Yep. When you least expect it, you're elected. And this dude, this dude, he's like waiting in the, hey, how you doing? Welcome to McDonald's. Would you, you know, take your order there, brother? Would you like uh, fries with that or whatever, cheese on that? And some dirt bag pulls a gun on him in the freaking drive through in the middle of the day? How many of you out there would have had your guard up? How many of you out there would have been paying attention? How many of you out there would have thought that that could happen to you? None of you would. None of you would. You're like, oh, that, that's crazy talk. I mean, why do you think you need to carry all of your reasonable friends and your reasonable relatives and your reasonable coworkers, the ones who think that you're a nut job because you carry a gun? Like, oh, what do you think's going to happen in the middle of the afternoon? Arr, arr, arr. I don't know. Maybe some jerkwad is going to walk up and stick a gun in my face in the freaking McDonald's drive through Holy crap. And then, to make matters worse, there's a little four-year-old kid caught in the middle of this. Now, I know what the, uh, the sandwich makers and the, and the Bloomberg prostitutes would say. Bloomberg's call girl would probably say, well... Just give them what they want. Just give them what they want, and they'll leave you alone. Until they decide not to. Until they just decide. You have to think about this. If somebody is so deranged and maniacal that they would rob you in the middle of the daytime at a crowded McDonald's restaurant, that person is very mentally unstable. So you're going to bet your life on the kindness and mercy and rational behavior of somebody that's going to jack you in a McDonald's drive through at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? That's not the person who's, uh, whose mind I want to put my, uh, my life in. I don't want to put my fate in the hands of that kind of an individual. How about you, Jerry? Do you think that guy is just... Oh, he was just he was just a poor man who was looking for some money for crack and he just wanted some food. He was he hungry. Didn't he didn't deserve just, to die. He just hate people. Why do you hate people? Why do you think people should shoot people? Oh, maybe we could harken back to that uh that gargantuan galactic douche nozzle from the Huffington Post who opined that now this poor guy, this poor dead felon, isn't gonna get his day in court. Remember that? Do you remember that story about how self-defense is not a constitutional right because it denies the attacker their right to face their accusers? Don't ever forget, that's how the left thinks. They're mentally disturbed. So, A, congratulations and go-team moment from us here at Student of the Gun for, number one, 
being armed in the middle of the day. Yeah, because all of your reasonable friends, relatives, and coworkers will tell you, are you just some kind of crazy paranoid guy thinking that you need to have a gun all the time? I don't, I don't know why you would think you needed to have a gun all the time. What are you expecting? What do you expect to happen? I don't know. What do you expect to happen? I'm not expecting anything. If I was expecting it, well, A, I either wouldn't have been there, or B, I would have had a rifle in my hand. So, A, number one, dude had enough uh, wits about him to realize, oh, this is a bad situation. It just went from bad to worse. I've got a little kid here that needs me to stick around for him. And uh, he secured his gun, and he ventilated bad person. Bad person stopped trying to hurt him and then expired later. Go team. That dude is all done robbing people now. But what else do we know? What else about this story just warms our hearts? And I know all you hip cats out in the audience, you're going to be like, Paul, he actually did what is correct. He didn't give an interview. He sent his attorney out to talk to the media. Wow. How often have we seen situations where people use their guns in self-defense, and the first thing they did was stand up in front of a report like, oh, I shot him. I sure did. I saw him coming out of that building right there, and I was like, hey, that, that guy shouldn't have done and I shot him, man. That's a little boom hour for you there. I was just going to say that. Oh, uh, my daggum did you shot him, man. Oh, uh, and a lot of the, uh, on guns.com here, uh, it's amazing the amount of trolls on guns.com, Jared. I went and looked at some of the comments, and these these lunatic left wing trolls jump into these pro gun websites. I mean, I could see if it was on the ABC site, but are are you people? More people die at the hands of guns and are saved at the hands of guns. And I was like, oh, shut up, shut up. Hey, you know what? I had a helpful hint for any potential or wannabe or currently existing felons uh, that happen to be listening right now to avoid being shot and killed by your victim, don't rob them. You don't want to be shot and killed? Don't rob people in the McDonald's drive-thru in the middle of the Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon. That's a good way to not be shot. Get a job. Do something productive. Contribute to society. You know what? Being a bad guy should be hazardous to your health. Being a felon, criminal scumbag should be hazardous to your health. You should not want to do that. You're like, man, if I keep doing this, I, I might get shot. I better do something else. Exactly. Exactly. The dude had his attorney go out and let the attorney talk to the media, let the attorney give the public statement, because you, after, and, you know, people are like, oh, this guy shouldn't be upset. Dudes, dudes, dudes. They're like, he should be happy. You should be proud. He needs a medal for taking this, this scumbag off the street. Because if he didn't do it, that guy would have been right out robbing other people. You know what? You're right. If this guy would have just given in. Because what do we know, Jared? That when you make, when you make something easy, hmm, it seems to me that somebody in this building wrote an article about the psychology of criminals and bad people and how, well, basically human psychology. Jared, how do you get people to buy or participate or sign up or whatever on a website? Do you make it as difficult as possible for them or do you make it as easy as possible for them? Um, you make it as easy as possible. Because if, they, if it's easy and they enjoy the experience or they find that it was not difficult, then they're more likely to do that again. Is that not correct? Yes. But from a, a marketing and sales standpoint, if you make it hard for them to give you your money, and I'm talking about marketing, if it's difficult for the customer to buy, what is the likelihood that he's going to come by, back and buy a second time? Uh, less than it would be if... A tremendously less, three, right? Three I, clicks, that's it. Yeah, three clicks and you're out. If, you've, if you guys know anything about internet marketing, three clicks and you're out. If people have to click the mouse more than three times to get to the buy button to buy the product, they're like, I'm done with this crap, and they're out of there. And that's kind of like a sad reality that people are so lazy they can't even click the, the button three times. Well, it's not really, and it has nothing to do with the Internet. This is the way humans are. The human condition is this. If something works, 
you'll do it again. If something is tough, if something is difficult, most humans, dude, it's like exercise. How, Jared, how many times do people show up in this gym, at this facility, fight you, and they tell you a story in the lobby about how they want to be an MMA fighter? Or they tell you the story in the lobby about how they took martial arts when they were a kid and they love UFC and they love Chuck Liddell and they love it and they're going to do it. And you say, hey, rock on. Glad you're here. Welcome. Let's go in the gym. They get in the gym with a real no kidding trainer with a fight trainer, not not their their sensei from the. The strip mall karate studio, the taekwondo studio at the end of the strip mall. No, in an actual fighter's gym and an actual trainer who trains professional fighters puts them through their workout. And they're like, oh, and they don't come back. That, that brings me to tomorrow's topic of the fitness talks. Well, I feel fitness talk is going to be um, consistency is key and I'm wrapping be a man or woman of your word in with that topic. So, And you say, Paul, what does this have to do with criminals and shooting and so forth? It has to do this. Human beings, if you make something difficult for a human, most humans won't do it. It's just a human psychology, human psyche. However, if you achieve success in whatever it is you're doing, whatever you try, whatever, if you achieve success... What are you going to do? Well, you're going to keep doing that thing, right? Because you achieve success. And you're going to keep on doing it until you don't no longer achieve success or you have to do something else. You want to know why recidivist criminals, you know what recidivist is? It means people that keep doing it over and over again, career criminals. Why recidivist criminals are such a problem in America? Because, unfortunately... Recidivist criminals have been shown by experience that not only can they get away with it, but every year the punishment for their crimes get less and less severe. They do less and less time in jail. They realize that they know how to work the system, and it becomes something that it's easy for them to do. Every single... A uh, person out there that you know that is the quote unquote reasonable aunt or coworker or whatever that doesn't that thinks that you're a barbarian because you think that robbers and home invaders and felons and rapists and criminals that that they should be shot to make them stop and they think that's crazy. Oh no no, just give them what they want. It's not worth taking a human life. Blah, 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 blah. Do you know what those people are doing by their words and if they ever become a victim by their actions? The truth of the matter is from the hard, cold, absolute psychology of it is when you surrender to a criminal, when you, quote, do as Shannon the sandwich maker says and just give them what they want so they'll leave you alone, you are absolutely guaranteeing that that person, that creature, that monster, that they're going to continue in that behavior. You're guaranteeing it because what you did is you just reaffirmed their actions. You reaffirmed their decision. They're like, I'm going to go over here and rob this guy. Let me see if I can do it. Man, that was easy. That guy like pissed his pants and, and handed me his wallet and apologized to me for standing on the street. I could do that again. Do you think a, a woman who submits willingly to a rape, do you think the rapist goes home and is like, man, that was, that was too easy, and now I feel really super bad, and um, I'm just not going to do that ever again? No, it's the exact opposite, buttheads. And you're not buttheads, but the people you're talking to are buttheads. When you surrender, when you go without a fight, you are perpetuating that behavior. You're guaranteeing that that behavior will continue. And let me tell you what, if you're a Christian and you care about your fellow man, do you want to support their sin? Well, no, I don't want to support their sin. I I think their sin is bad. Do you know by giving in, acquiescing, handing them what they want, what you're handing them is success 
you're telling that you're reinforcing their behavior and you're guaranteeing that their behavior, that their sin is going to continue. What? You mean by being a nice guy and giving them everything they ask for and not putting up a struggle that they're not going to just say, wow, I feel bad now and stop doing that. No. What you just told that human animal is that his plan worked. And so he's going to keep right on doing that thing until he meets an obstacle. If you're a Christian listening to me right now, and you really believe in saving a man from sin, right, and that you don't want them to continue in their sinful ways with their sinful behavior, then you won't approve of it. I don't approve of it. I completely and totally disapprove of it, Paul. No, when you cooperate with that behavior, you're reinforcing it. If you, Jared, listen to me. Look at me over here. If you're a Christian and you really want rapists and felons and criminals and and the scum of the earth to stop doing what they're doing, you will shoot them. You will shoot them and they will realize in being shot the error of their sinful ways. And they are far less likely to continue down that path than they are if you just are a nice guy and give them what they want. I'm going to tell you this, brothers and sisters. I'm not being glib. I'm not joking. All of your, all the advice you get from the reasonable people about, oh, you know, blah, 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 don't fight back. and da, da, da. Those people are guaranteeing that someone else is going to be victimized. They're guaranteeing that after, if they're lucky enough to survive that assault, that attack, that criminal encounter, if they're lucky enough to survive, the selfish cowards that they are, they're guaranteeing that someone else is going to be a victim again very soon. And my hat, my proverbial hat, is 100% way off to this guy in Texas for guaranteeing that the McDonald's drive through robber will never rob anyone again. All right. It is Tuesday. So what does that mean, Jared? Uh, means that we're going to have quiet time. We're going to have some quiet time. Here at SilencerShop.com, we normally focus on making the world a quieter place. Not today. Rule 41F takes effect soon, making silencer ownership more complicated. The good news is silencershop.com can help. But don't delay. Purchase any in-stock silencer by July 6th, and Silencer Shop guarantees to get your Form 4 submitted and execute your transfer before deadline under current rules or give you $100, the Powered by Silencer Shop guarantee. Details and restrictions at silencershop.com. All right, thank you, Silencer Shop, for sponsoring the quiet time moment and uh, this week on quiet time the topic is family talk yes family talk if you're a mom if you're a dad and if you have children especially if they're younger children eventually your younger children will probably realize that you carry a gun you have a gun we own a gun and you i'm guessing that you're all everyone listening to me is uh, a responsible adult human, and you've done the firearm safety with your kids. You know, universal safety rules. Uh, it's not a toy. We don't play with it. If you're curious, if you want to know about daddy's gun, mommy's gun, tell us. We'll sit you down, clear it, take the ammo away. You can hold it, do whatever you want to do to it, okay? I did that with all three of my kids. Dude, my, my kids were so jaded and, and like, bored with guns. By the time I told the story, the the Zach story is a classic story. Yeah. I, I, sh- I come home five years ago. I come walking in the house with two Chris 45 guns, two vectors, a vector pistol and a vector carbine. I take them into the family room. I put them on the table, and I open the boxes, and Zach's in there, and he's watching TV or some, playing a game or something. And I was like, Zach, look what I got. And he's like, yeah, those are the, it's a vector. <laughs> You you don't want to look at it? Yeah. Like, holy crap! <laughs> he he was just like, so, nah, whatever. I never had to worry that when, you know, Nancy and I were gone, that the kids were going to sneak and try and find the guns and get them out of the safe and play with them or whatever, like toys. 
because they never felt the need to. He took the curiosity away. There, there was no, there, it wasn't a forbidden fruit. And and heck, for the young ones, they're like, eh, well, whatever. Dad's got another gun. I don't know, whatever, I don't care. Uh, you know, heck, Paxton, Paxton was 12 years old shooting a 50 BMG. Yep. You know, and she actually shot the, uh, what was it, the, the M82A1 compact version yeah. the first year that, that Barrett released those. I had one to test and evaluate, and, and my little daughter's out there in the range with me shooting the Barrett. Mm-hmm. Boom. And, of course, we put pictures up. And really, tell me again about how recoil sensitive you are, <laughs> you know, 12-year-old girl shooting it. But my point is this. You talk to your kids about firearm safety. Yes, check. Okay, good job. At some point in time, you might have to cross the bridge, or you should cross the bridge about mommy and daddy have guns, right? And they carry guns. And they take them out of the house and they attach them to their bodies. And A, number one, we don't talk about that to our friends. Remember I told you, Zachary, we don't talk about what daddy does to strangers. Oh, yeah. What, what do you do to strangers? Well, I had to have that talk with the kids because well, when I was a police officer the whole time they were little, from the time Jared was wee little all the way up till when Zach was real little. And, you know, we would tell them, like, when we're out, we don't tell people that Daddy is a police officer. You know, we don't talk about Daddy. Daddy has a gun, and he's going to carry a gun, but that's not anybody else's business. People outside of our family don't need to know that. Yeah. It's none of their business, so we don't talk about that to other people. We don't tell people that mommy and daddy have guns because it's none of their business. It's and because uh, kids will do that. Oh heck yeah, they will. Daddy gun, mommy gun. Um, so you, you talk to them about it. And after, and the thing is, kids. After you've talked to them about it once or twice, they're gonna be like, "All right, I'm bored with this subject. Can we just go do something else? <laughs> you know, I, I've got a new app on my phone, or a new video game, or a new whatever. You know." Uh, it won't be a big deal to them anymore. They'll they'll check the block, and they're like, okay, cool, I get it, I understand. Uh, Grossman. Uh, I was just about to say, yeah, he have a new Colonel book Grossman, coming out. He's got a brand new book coming out. It's, uh, I think it's called, like, Why Does Mommy Carry a Gun? Something like that. And it's a kid's book. It's actually an illustrated children's book, and it has, like, a mommy sheepdog and, like, a little baby sheepdog, and the mommy sheepdog is telling the baby sheepdog about why mommy carries a gun because there are wolves out there and the wolves would try and come and hurt you and I'm not going to let the wolves hurt you. And uh, he, That's what he was showing me on his laptop. He had the whole thing. The book's probably not ready yet, but it will be ready very soon. Uh, but it's a children's book, and if you go to – I can't remember what Grossman's site is. It's Sheep, Dog, Knife, and Gun. Oh, sheep, com is, well, is yeah. the thing. But, I mean, just search on Google. Yeah, search on Google. Or Lieutenant or Colonel whatever. Dave Grossman, children's book, You just whatever. put – Dave Grossman Children's Book. It comes up. Yeah, I did it, it earlier. Up. Yeah. To see if that one was out. So the, he already has one. He has a new one, and it's illustrated. But it, it makes the point of you need to address this with your kids. The worst thing you can do is try and keep secrets like that. I mean, obviously, you don't tell your kids everything. You don't stress them out. Uh, you don't tell them that we don't have enough money to, like, pay the car payment, and then the mean man with the tow truck is going to come take it tomorrow. You don't tell them that mm-hmm. stuff. But you tell them, you know, why mommy and daddy have a gun and, and so on and so forth. And after you have that conversation, going back to the previous one here, I was thinking about this, like, you know, the attorney says he's very distraught and so forth. And, and dudes, whether or not he's distraught or not is none of the public's business. And all you guys are like, he shouldn't be distraught. He's a hero. Shh. The attorney is saying what the stupid sheep want to hear. The stupid sheep want to hear Oh, he's really super distraught and upset, and he's surrounded by his family, and they, they please appreciate their privacy. That's what the sheep and the news media puke faces need to hear. The attorney did exactly what his job was. What's the attorney going to do? Go in front of the, the news channel four and say, yeah, woo, high five. He's high fiving his neighbors. Woo, they're grilling out. Having a good old time. Woo! Drinking some beers. No, of course he's not going to say that because he's an intelligent attorney. Because all of your soft minded friends that are watching the news, that's what they want to hear. That makes, oh, he's obviously a good man because he, 
he feels remorse for shooting down that piece of human filth that was just going to probably a recidivist criminal who has a record longer than my leg. But he feels bad. Okay, cool. Cool. Here's the deal. You need to talk to your spouse, whether you're the woman or the man, whatever, if you have guns for self-protection. Even if you just keep one in your house, but you don't ever carry it with you. Um, I don't know what to say to you if you do that, but whatever. It's your world. If there ever comes a time that you have to ventilate a scumbag, a home invader, robber, rapist, murderer, felon, scum, whatever, you have to put bullets into a human. It's going to be a very stressful time for your family, especially if it just if it like one, you know, one minute you're just whistling and heading to the grocery store. And the next minute there's a dude laying dead and, you know, the echo of gunfire and all that. And police are here. And it's going to be very stressful for them. Well, between the mommy and daddy, you guys need to have the conversation. You're like, okay, probably won't ever happen, but probably is bull crap. So if the if you or I, if we have to use a firearm to defend ourselves against a bad person, this is what needs to be ha- needs to happen. Okay? And one of the needs to happen things is you need to talk to the spouse and the kids about we don't talk to people outside of the family about it. We have a family attorney. His name is Fred or her name is Susie or whatever. And they're going to be the ones that talk to other people. If strangers want to know, if news people want to know, if people want to know, he will talk to them. Okay? We don't get on. And for the love of all that is holy, the worst thing that can happen to you. Well, not the worst thing, but I mean, you're like, but don't let your 13-year-old get on social media and like chirp, 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 chirp about it. Yeah, dad said, F them mother effers, and F them in the face, and I'm going to shoot them in their effing face, and yeah, no, don't do that. You need to have the time, and Jared's laughing over there, but you know that there that there are yep. idiot, there are that, idiot that 13-year-olds who were like, yeah, my dad said, F that MFer, and he got what he had coming to him, and, and you know, you need to talk to the family about, hey, this is what needs to happen. It's going to be family time, and the only person that's going to talk to anybody outside of the family is going to be the family attorney, and you know, talk to the wife. And if you have the, you know, if you have the insurance or whatever, most homeowners insurance will cover cover you. But if you have the concealed carry insurance, you know, make sure that the wife and you make sure if you're the one involved in the shooting, make sure your spouse has the one eight hundred call the insurance or call the attorney. I made sure that my wife in her phone. There's a contact that says, attorney, hit that one, boop, because I might not be able to, or you might not be able to, or whatever. So these are just conversations that uh, you should have. And it's, and you're like, oh, that's like talking about like funeral arrangements, or that's like talking about your will, or, you know, nobody wants to talk about that. No, you don't want to. It's not happy and fun and Mickey Mouse and everything, but it's something that you should do. If you're going to carry a gun, if you're going to be a responsible gun owner, and you understand that you may be called upon at some point in time to use it, these are discussions that you should have beforehand, not after. All right. Thank you for joining us once again for Student of the Gun Radio. And uh, Jared, I think what we need to do, I'm going to go ahead and say this today. I know we've done it before just occasionally, but at the end of the radio uh, show, are you listening to me still? You are? You're still out there? Good. Because you got Student of the Gun Radio for free for nothing. Just because good people, otherwhere in the world, help sponsor it. You got it for nothing, right? That's all I'm going to ask you to do. Share this show with one person. If you can't think of one single person in your life, coworker, family member, friend, churchgoer, whatever, that can benefit from this, then you need to start thinking a little harder. Okay? Share it with one person, and that's your homework assignment. And remember, you're a beginner once, but you should indeed be a student for life.